Warning, the following content some viewers may find disturbing, gross, and stomach-turning. In order to share the following story, we feel this content is needed. Viewer discretion is advised. My name is Steve Smith, and I'd like to be able to tell you the story about my encounter with blastomycosis. So while at work in 2015, while digging in the dirt, I encountered the mold which would grow blastomycosis. I happened to breathe that mold spore in. The things that happened next were, I took on symptoms as if I had the flu. I started coughing really, really bad. I couldn't figure out why. I just had this cough in my chest that I couldn't get rid of. And I literally thought I was gonna cough my head off. So along with the cough, I began to feel weak, sick to my stomach. Head, my head was never really plugged up. It was just all in my chest and it was really hard for me to breathe. Three, four days of this process, I said, well, maybe we should go to the doctor. They gave me some antibiotics, sent me home, and um, I continued to, to do my day job. Another two days have passed, taking antibiotics. I went from bad the worse. So then what I mean from that is, is that the breathing became a lot more difficult, the coughing became a whole lot more, more prominent, and just my, my chest burned like fire. And they began to treat me again, thinking that if they gave me steroids, then that would um, lessen the symptoms and, you know, maybe calm my coughing down. Well, that didn't seem to work either. And a few days after that is then when I had a, uh, I had a sore come up on my right flank. And that sore took the form of a, like a really, really huge pimple. And then it started to get a head on it. So my wife, it was really red uh, looking around the area. So my wife had taken a marker, drew a line around the outside edge of it. My name is Katie Smith and I am married to Steve Smith. Steve has a bunch of blanks in his story because he doesn't remember. It's just all complete blur and that's where I come in and fill in things. I'll never forget when Steve came over to me. I was at my barn. It was April of 2015 and he came over and he jerked up his shirt and he said, hey, what in the world do you think's happening here? Look at this. And I was like, mm, I'm not sure. Maybe you're getting an abscess and we need to keep an eye on that. So. I finished up over at my barn and then I came over and I got a magic marker and I drew around it. It was just a trick that my pediatrician had taught me. How do you tell if something has gotten bigger as you draw with your permanent marker around it and that's what I did. When I talk about the flu, I talk that's like throwing up flu, but actually he had a respiratory infection. He was working crazy, crazy hours at work, crazy overtime, and we didn't get to see him much. He would like you he would come home and then be halfway home and then have to turn around and go some back some more and I just thought well you know his his body was just fat, tired and fatigued and it finally caught up with him so everybody gets sick but then the cough never really went away he went out to urgent care and got treated and 
It never really went away and then this abscess popped up on his side. I went ahead and continued, went back to work again the next day. When I came in that evening, I told her, I said, this thing is bothering me so bad on my side. I have no idea what it is, but it hurts for my shirt to even touch the skin, that it was that sore. So we raised up my shirt and the area that we'd circled the day prior was about as big as a grapefruit. So that evening, whenever I raised my shirt, that area had went from grapefruit size to probably double that size. He went out to back out to the urgent care to see the physician's assistant. And I mean, it looked like an abscess, so it wasn't getting better with treatment. That's what they thought it was. And they had to lance it and go through that. And then he had to go back every couple days because she'd have to pull the pull the packing out and then like repack it and make sure it was getting better. Out probably three, four, five days, somewhere around that vicinity. The sores started getting uh, other little sores around the area. So the area was probably about the size of a, maybe a quarter, 50 cent piece and uh, a hole in my right side. And then it started getting these little um, almost like little pimples on the outside of it. And then another one had sprang up about that far away. She's like, Steve, I have no idea what this is, what's going on. So at that time, they sent me to the hospital in Oakland, Maryland. I spent 12 days in the hospital. They thought uh, that I had MRSA, staph, something of that nature which I was on vancomycin, clindamycin, the highest doses that you could actually take. It really didn't help at all. Um, the sores just kept getting worse. They kept getting bigger. They just kept oozing. Uh, more places was breaking out. They took biopsies. They sent them off. Um, they kept telling us that it wouldn't culture as staph. It wouldn't culture as MRSA. Other nurses, uh, they would come in, have to clean this, scrub it out, and clean it. And uh, that was pretty painful. Uh, one thing that was extremely painful, and they uh, came bedside and I asked them if they could numb it. We'll go ahead and give you a lot of morphine. And we know this is gonna hurt. So whenever the nurse started to give me the morphine, it felt like, felt like you just took my head off of my shoulders and set it somewhere else. Um, my body hurt really, really bad. Like I did not like the fact of the way the morphine made me feel. Just kind of rolled over in the side of my bed, grabbed a hold of the side of the bed rail, and I said, hey, go ahead and do what you gotta do. And he says, you have to promise me that you won't move. And he said, because I'm actually gonna have a scalpel in your side about that deep. I said, do what you gotta do. So I rolled over on the side of the bed, grabbed onto the side of the bed rail and I hung on for dear life. That hurt pretty bad. So we try to keep it lighthearted. Um, Steve does have a band, so we were on the band page. Steve was like getting bored and stir crazy and he was tracking people and they were doing construction. So we were making posts about him tracking people in the, in the hospital and their different tracks on this sticky pad that they had to walk on. Then after a while, it sort of got, you know, worrisome on my side of things because I thought, my goodness, they don't know what's wrong with them. Eventually, he got sent to surgery and they wanted to clean it out really good. So they cut it and cleaned it and did all this sort of gross stuff and came in that afternoon and was like, well, okay, it's time for you to go home. And I remember thinking, what? We don't even know what's wrong with this. And you're gonna send us home? So they sent us home, they sent Steve home and within 24 hours we were back in the emergency room because they had given him an antifungal pill, fluconazole, and he popped these rashes, these blotches, and no one could figure out why. Well then they just gave him some Benadryl for that and sent him home again. I remember when Steve was in the hospital the first time, he had this cough. His cough was still lingering and I remember him complaining about like he just felt like something in his chest. And I told the doctor, and at first Steve wouldn't tell, wouldn't say anything about it. And I told him, I said, you know, they need to know this. Like any little, one little thing might be the missing piece to the puzzle. I told the doctor and they were like, oh, they listened to him. They're like, oh, it's it's probably just left unit left over from your, your respiratory infection and it'll be okay. And so we didn't think anything of it. We had to go back first checkups. And that's the time where I thought, uh, we better get a handle on this. And they wanted to cut in and graph. And I just remember my stomach 
turning when they were talking about cutting these this big hole and I thought to myself if you can't tell us what's the matter with him why would we let you cut a great big hole in his side to then try to heal that like you can't heal this and everybody kept saying the doctor's office kept saying oh it's MRSA and I kept saying but if it was MRSA it would culture for MRSA and they say it's MRSA you just don't understand it's MRSA and I'm like well you just don't understand if it's MRSA it would culture for MRSA you know staph infection is a staph infection wouldn't it culture as many times as it had been sent out you know push that to the side a little bit and we determined that he was going to go have this big skin graft on his leg and this great big cleaned out on his side and if this is not better in two weeks time we're actually going to have to uh, cut about this deep into your side and then we're going to have to take a skin graft off of your leg and put it on your side because we don't know what this is and we're like well let's just wait and see my family business is in construction um, and remodeling and we were actually ironically remodeling a building that was going to be for the local dermatologist we were finishing up the bill the end of the billing and my father said to me hey bring this out to dr. Herring's office we need to sit and go through the bill and and finish this job up okay it had been like crazy time in our lives because I was in the hospital with Steve and I was trying to just go back and forth and I was at dr. Herring's office and I was he was writing a check and I thought, wait a minute, this is Steve Skin. This is a dermatologist. Maybe I should ask him. And this whole time I had to take pictures of everything as it progressed. And I remember flipping my phone over and I said, Dr. Herring, I have to ask you a question. What do you think about this? And I turned my phone around and, and he took my phone and he said, what is this? And I said, well, that's my husband's side right now and this is what's happened and they don't know, you know, no one could figure it out. And he said, get him in here to see me, you know, tomorrow morning. We have to see him. 